You what's, know how to answer this. You got it. What's one move in bed that makes a man go crazy every time? Oh, you, you got to give him that hook, too, and spit on that thing. You get me? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't get you. I think you got to uh, demonstrate. Hawk to no, on like, it. Spit okay. on it. Damn, Daniel. Damn, Daniel. Damn, Daniel. Damn, Daniel. Can I ask again what you saw? Yeah. You know, the reason why I probably haven't come out yet, because it's like so cringe. Um, I did not see anything. What? I mean, because th- everyone obviously s- said they watched the clip and they're like, oh, what'd you see? Like, I, I did look absolutely crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, I just was in my feels, needed to get off that. I was highly distressed. But that's the exception. I'm the rule. Everybody I know who's married right now, they're bra- married to broken. What's a move in bed that drives men crazy every time? I feel like. No, you gotta give them that. No, okay. <laughs> Okay, that's I take it like it's a rattlesnake Wait, and go stop. bite his head. Give me the mic. You what? gotta go. Oh. Oh. Question for you. What are those? So today I wanted to talk about something we've kind of been covering on this channel, and I will go over like a little bit of what we've been talking about with that racist TikTok trad wife, because I really wanted to talk about 15 seconds of fame. Now, obviously, the traditional saying is 15 minutes of fame, but in the social media age, that's even quicker. So many viral trends, so many viral memes, people suddenly becoming so famous, only to be completely forgotten the next day. And in that, there's an even bigger rush to try and monetize this viral fame. And we're recently seeing it with the Hawk girl, or the Hawk tour girl, who went originally viral for just a random street interview when she was obviously like pretty drunk with one of her mates, and has now apparently found some sort of like talent agency or something, right? And I'm not hating on this person in particular. I watch interviews of her today, seems like a totally normal person, and I say, yeah, go for it. If you can make money off this, they're a 21-year-old who works at a factory and they quit their job because of this, because they're selling so much merch. So if you can do that, fair enough. But what we're going to look at today is that most people in this position, it doesn't last long. The monetization of this doesn't last long either. And that's why everyone is so quick to jump on it as like, I want to be an influencer because of my 15 seconds of fame. And today I wanted to look at like more recent examples and just how like dystopian it is in some ways. Because with Hawk Girl, she basically said, I don't want to be known as this, but that's all you're going to be known for forever. And that might be a good thing for some people because you would have never got noticed in any other capacity and maybe you can make a lot of money from it, even if it's during a short period. But also, whenever you get recognised in public by strangers, it's probably going to be because of this one moment or you're actually just completely fade into obscurity. And I want to talk about that aspect of it as well in terms of like the dopamine of getting attention online as someone myself who has experienced that as well. And just talk about like what that can do to people and why people seemingly who do get their 15 seconds sometimes go bad and start doing loads of attention seeking stuff just to stay relevant and keep getting those dopamine hits. So all of that coming up for you today, please like the video and uh, check me out on social media at The Cavernacle on Instagram mainly and also my travel Instagram. Uh, Check me out on other social medias like Freds and Blue Sky and also if you want to support my work check out the Patreon page where you can get access to videos like this one early and can watch it on Patreon ad free. And this is also the way to get access to the Discord server. So with all of that out of the way, let's get into the video. So let's talk about the Hawk Tour girl first, just as like the most recent case study of a 15 seconds of fame. And she's experiencing this right now. And I'm making this video basically because today I watched a new interview she did and she basically launched like a lot of social media stuff and she was at some sort of concert and was brought up on stage to shout this catchphrase. And I swear there's been like a million like Disney Channel kids shows which have the plot line of someone getting famous for doing one thing and then people just like not caring anymore by the end of the episode. Like I swear that's a very tried and true uh, like plot device in a lot of kids shows back when I was younger. And it's still relevant today. Like they bring her up on stage to say this one thing because that is what she's famous for. 
If you don't know what I'm talking about, basically like a YouTube, TikTok, Instagram page was doing interviews of people on the street who'd been drinking clearly about like their sex lives and stuff. And this one girl who is barely paying attention for most of the interview, which is interesting to me in terms of how much this has changed her life. Uh, the interviewer is mainly talking to her friend and then asked about like, what is one thing in bed or like some sort of move you'll do in bed that drives men crazy or whatever. And she basically outlined it in kind of funny graphic detail and it went viral after that. To you, I think you gotta uh, demonstrate. Hawk tools. Spit no, like, on it. Spit on it. <laughs> Alright, anymore? Oh yeah. Anymore. Okay, I got another one for y'all. Okay. Would you rather? Hold on, is she listening? Would you rather? And I guess I understand why it went viral. I guess it's kind of funny, like, people like the accent as well. And, yeah, it's just like, a funny meme. I get that. I get funny memes. But I guess what happens is, there's always a person behind the meme, for the most part. And quickly people found out who this person was. And yeah, fair enough. They monetized it as well. And this was the news recently, which is just funny to me. Hulk to a girl, Hayley Welch finds representation. Like it's just such an expected thing, right? You're gonna find like media representation if you're in like one viral video. So she signed for representation with management firm Penthouse. The world's gone crazy for Hayley. I'm glad our team can help guide this rocket ship. All the podcasters are right. Spend five minutes with her and you'll see why she is America's sweetheart, Penthouse founder Johnny Foster said in a statement. Welch has also tapped Nashville entertainment attorney Christian Barker of Christian Barker & Co. for representation. Haley has risen to fame with her cheeky humor, but after getting to know her on a greater level, I think her small town grassroots story and how a chance encounter on Broadway took her on this unexpected path to stardom that will resonate with millions. We are proud to represent her on this journey, Barker said in his own statement. And also an article by Rolling Stone, Hawk to a Girl has sold $65,000 worth of merch. So it's a couple of weeks ago. So Jason Poteet uh, is serving as the brand manager, who's a Marshall County native who has known Welch for years, telling Rolling Stone that a day or two after the viral video started going viral, he reached out to a stunned Welch to figure out a way to monetize her brand. Of course, she hasn't got a dime out of the first viral video that went out. Nobody was asking permission for her to do nothing, neither... I just wanted her to get some profit off his deal and himself as well. Uh, he declined to share exactly what percentage of the proceeds he gets. Welch is receiving, but says he suggested she trademark the phrase and she's been in touch with a lawyer about it. Just talking about he sells hats like Hawk Tour 24 and getting like a lot of orders at the moment. And I think she said in like an interview as well, I think they either split it 50-50 or something close to that. And you know, like, Fair enough. I honestly have no problem with that at all. I do obviously, you know, as someone who's anti-capitalist, I do find it funny, like, there's so many vultures out there who are just waiting on the next viral thing, thinking, how can I monetize this woman for my own gain, right? Because, like, none of these people really have her best interest at heart. They're just saying, how can I make money off this trend? So we're going to get her, like, a management company, a lawyer. She's going to go on loads and loads of podcasts. And honestly, you know... I wish her well. I wish her well. I hope she makes a successful social media career and she uses this to, you know, get a better life, essentially, right? Because she seems like she's someone from, you know, a humble background. I think she said in one of the interviews as well, uh, she dropped out of college as well. So yeah, I'm all for people improving themselves. And with social media content creation, a lot of the time there's not much labor exploitation that gets involved. You know, if I became um, a million sub YouTube channel, that's just me doing it on my own, right? I don't find it that controversial. But there is something she said in an interview, and I want to play this for you. And it's like, I don't want to be known as the Hawk Tour girl. So I think majority of people just think it's a, in a hilarious meme. Oh, yeah. And uh, I'm just like, what do you do now? Because now you have management, now you have a team. What are your plans moving forward? Like, do you want to still be the Hawk Tour girl? Or do you want to, like... I don't really want it? that to be, like, my image. Yeah. Like, hot to the girl. <laughs> I just, I don't see that being, like, a my thing. thing. You know? Yeah, I don't want to be known as that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's funny. And you're also only 21, so you yeah. kind of said something silly. And I think half of the internet also is on your side with that, where it's oh, yeah. like, you're out drinking after a night with your oh, friends. Yeah. You get asked, what is something crazy you do in bed? 
Oh yeah. Hot to it. <laughs> it was funny. I was being a little bit of a smart ass too. Cause yeah. Like, you're gonna come up to me with a microphone and ask me something like that. Oh, well, I'm gonna hot to it and spit <laughs> on it, you know. <laughs> I don't mean nothing by it. Yeah, you were like actually being serious. Oh, yeah. You were just And I'm gonna link that interview and I probably put the name of it for you. So go check that out. It's just like a longer interview, they're talking about like how it happened and what happened and how it went crazy. And this person just seems like a normal person, which I think is why people might like her. I don't know what's gonna happen to this person, but I do find it sad. But yet yeah, genuinely she probably doesn't want to be known as the Hawk Tour girl. Like she is riding that trend at the moment, but at the end of the day, if it doesn't work out and the money dries up, you still want people to see you in the street and say, oh yeah, you're the Hawk Tua girl. Matthew Perry said something interesting. Like obviously when he died, I was reading a lot about him. He said he hated being famous basically because people wouldn't see him as Matthew Perry. They'd see him as Chandler from Friends. So they'd always just want him to say stuff from Friends. And he said about how dehumanizing that is. But obviously, Matthew Perry was a good actor. Performed like this role as a beloved character. There's some talent that goes into that. But it's even worse when you're someone who's only famous for saying one thing. And you can potentially become trapped by that for the rest of your life. Because everyone will always know you for that one thing. And it's just the nature of fame in many ways. You know, I like the killers. If Brandon Flowers passes away, Mr. Brightside is going to be in the first paragraph of his obituary, right? The same with Matthew Perry. He's always just going to be known as Chandler from Friends. It happens to plenty of actors. Like Tom Holland will only be remembered for Spider-Man primarily. Same with Tobey Maguire. But some people do effectively cast off their image. Like Daniel Radcliffe, in my head, I don't really think is just Harry Potter. I think of him as like a general actor now. But he's the rare exception of someone who's escaped his past being tied to one thing or in one performance. And that is just like the disturbing nature of it. And obviously, what I want to touch on as well with her specifically, Hawk to her, you get so much fame so quickly, unimaginable attention. And it obviously feels good because you feel like you've achieved something. Like surely I've done something right in this meritocracy to be recognized. And what I feel like happens and I feel bad for people is you get that dopamine rush of attention and then quickly your 15 seconds is up and it, it's gone forever. And you'll never be successful again in the same way probably. I know probably a lot of people in her own life are probably jealous of her right now. I'm definitely not jealous of people like this. Even if she makes like, let's say $10 million off being the Hawk to a girl, who would really want that? Would you want that watching this right now? And I say that as someone who has experienced, you know, through this Z tier YouTube channel, you know, you experience like similar things or you experience the good parts of like relative online fame, like people messaging you nice things. Uh, I've been recognized three times in public by just like random people saying nice things about me to my face. And one was in Vietnam on a street corner. One was up London and one was actually near where I live. And it was just like pretty wild. I'm like, oh, this is this is quite cool. Um, and also I said to my girlfriend, but if one day, if you just snap your fingers and my whole online presence went, I think it would be quite hard to deal with. The lack of engagement I would get and the lack of people caring about what I say anymore I think that would be hard to deal with at the moment while I still enjoy it, right? I'm not someone who, who hates this attention. I like it because I always thought I had good opinions and I wanted to put it out there for people to listen to. Um, and I think it must be really hard for these viral sensations to have that on like a much larger scale. With YouTubers, you normally have a more long drawn out cycle of your rise, your like, I guess, steady period and your decline. With these people, it's like, go to the top of the mountain and then come right back down in two seconds. Now, before we get into people with 15 seconds of fame uh, and we talk about one who is fading right now, the racist TikTok trad wife. And then I want to talk about, if you guys remember this, damn Daniel back from, I think, 2016. I want to talk about one example I can think of. There's not too many others and maybe you can think of one in the comments, but Danielle Brigoli, is probably the only example I can think of of someone who had 15 seconds of fame and made it into a really successful career. But I would say she is the outlier because she was so controversial from the outset. It was just wild. 
like that Dr. Phil appearance, everything her mother said she did. She was just like some out of control teenager who of course was very sexualized anyway, but based on her own actions and what she did to provoke her mother, it just entered the culture. And then she actually had like a fairly decent, not saying I like her music, music career as well. Because she turned that controversial image into music and she had people around her who knew what to do with that to make something that wasn't like completely terrible. And then obviously with her sexualized image, she turned that into a really successful OnlyFans career too. But throughout her rise, and I guess she's at the mountaintop right now, she has consistently been engaged in so much drama with other famous people. Like she could threw a drink at like Iggy Azalea, had loads of online fights of like other famous people. She's always through her controversy found ways to remain relevant. And that's why she's the rare exception because she's so provocative in many, many ways, right? Someone like the Hawk Tua girl, for example, just based on what I've seen, she seems like a very normal person, probably like, you know, fairly average, fairly nice person. I don't see her being so controversial, even though what she's become famous for is like pretty sexualized. It's just not the same as someone like Danielle Brigoli. So we'll really have to see where that goes. But as like a fairly regular person, you know, if she monetizes this, good for her. But yeah, again, the vultures surrounding these people is always funny to me. Because at the end of the day, if, if she doesn't work out for them, they'll drop her in two seconds. So I hope she signs some good contracts with these people where they have to do a big payout if they do drop her. Now let's talk about a current dying like viral person and then let's talk about like a dead trend, damn Daniel. So I made a couple of videos on uh, the racist TikTok trad wife and she obviously became famous for dropping a racial slur in a video and the videos I've made on her recently is her attacking conservative people who might be her fans. So I just went on her page, her Twitter page, the main one, and just to see what she was posting. And her engagement is just like not great in terms of maybe torpedoing your whole life by getting controversial for this one thing. Like sure, she sometimes gets thousands of likes, but then, you know, she has a post up for a day, uh, 200 likes. That's not uncommon for me to get something like that. A video where she just plays into like crazy conspiracy theories, 1.7K likes. It's clear this person's attention and their stardom or whatever it is, is failing and fading even among conservatives because the people who succeed with this stuff, it feels like you have to have either just insane controversy in the mainstream sphere, like Bad Baby, but with someone like this, the only people who like her are conservatives, right? And if they find you like boring or whatever, or they think you're attacking them, they're just not going to stick around, right? You don't have any mainstream appeal. So you're basically cornering yourself into one section of the, like, the US population. But like I said with the other video, she's not smart enough because she keeps attacking people who would like her. So she's cutting her audience up even more. And as we predicted in the other video, it seems like she's becoming less and less relevant. She only goes on like pretty obscure conservative podcasts. She still doesn't seem to have gotten any media jobs or whatever. So it's safe to say she's just going to become another conservative talking head grifter on Twitter who might have like a fair bit of, you know, social media attention on Twitter, which is boosted by loads of right wing bots. Let's keep it real. But in terms of having like mainstream success, even mainstream conservative success, let's say like Candace Owens or something who is herself extremely inflammatory too I just don't think it's happening because this is basically now a dime a dozen in the conservative movement um, and one more thing just want to talk about conservatives and it's linked to the Hawk Tour girl as well crazy plain lady when I say that you know who I'm talking about and that's what is so dystopian about this imagine for the rest of your life being known as a uh, the crazy plain lady <laughs> or the Hawk Tour girl but that is what this person, Tiffany Gomez, is going to be remembered as. Now, someone said recently she successfully transitioned that viral moment into a social media career. And I'll give her credit. She gets like a fair bit of engagement for like only being famous for being like the crazy plain lady. Here we have a post of 8,000 likes. And then she did a sponsorship deal with some right wing company where she's wearing a bikini. So because she's like in good shape, fairly attractive... 
maybe she will have some sort of social media career and maybe she could channel being the crazy plain lady into just being Tiffany Gomez, who formerly was the crazy plain lady. And she has a podcast or she's on a podcast where she's talking about the plane because obviously that's what people care about. They don't care about anything else apart from you being the crazy plain lady. Can I ask again what you saw? Yeah. You know, the reason why I probably haven't come out yet, because it's like so cringe, um, I did not see anything. What? I mean, I think y'all knew that. Okay. <laughs> I We honestly had no idea. Yeah. You said you did. No, I did not. The Those media. You said this motherfucker is not real. I said that motherfucker is not, not real. These. Or okay. This. So the only path I can see for people like the hawk to a girl and crazy plain lady, especially because, you know, they're conventionally attractive is they just have to become reality stars. Like, they have to go on Love is Blind or The Traitors or something like that to stay relevant. Because as we all know, a lot of reality TV stars are basically only one step removed from someone who went viral for, like, a crazy moment, right? Because a lot of these people purposely play a character to go viral, but just in the confines of, like, the Big Brother house and stuff like that. So it's very, very similar. And it feels like the only way you can sustain this fame is just become some sort of influencer who might appear on like reality TV. But the 15 seconds of fame, again, would you want this? Would you want 8,000 likes and 100K Instagram followers for forever being known as crazy plain lady? I don't think most people would want that. And as someone who doesn't really give a shit about money, short-term monetization of a crazy moment I had or a funny moment I have would not be worth the long-term damage. Also, I do not want to be known for one moment in my life. Obviously my audience is small, but I'm happy if I died tomorrow, people would remember me for like the YouTube channel and they'd remember me for like everything I've said, right? No one's gonna remember the Cavernacle as, I don't know, crazy plain boy, like first and foremost, that's not gonna be there. Maybe Mr. Beast's number one hater will be up there, but honestly, I don't mind being remembered like that. Like that's a title I'll happily have. You're the only person who thinks Elden Ring is a seven out of 10. I don't mind being remembered as that, but yeah, I wouldn't wanna be remembered for maybe one embarrassing moment when I'd been freaking out on a plane or I'd been drunk and given like a random interview on a street. And I'm sure that probably is a Black Mirror episode about it, but we all know how that can just be really terrible for people like it can literally ruin your life like this could ruin hawk to a girl's life we don't know how this person feels and in the future 20 years from now she could say how she regrets ever becoming famous for this we just don't know and it also is with a lot of fame like matthew perry was saying it's just very very dehumanizing no matter what you think of the actual person it's just being known for one thing you either play into that because that's what people like you for or you don't and you become irrelevant and people become addicted to fame. So what often happens, especially in like reality TV circles, is you play into it and you become known for like a certain thing. But this 15 seconds of fame is very fleeting. And we all know there are just so many people who became famous for X and Y, and now they're just nothing. And I think for me, one I remember the most was Damn Daniel. Now Damn Daniel, I think, was a vine it was just a video someone recorded someone's friend he just kept saying damn daniel about his sh like shoes damn daniel damn daniel damn daniel damn daniel, damn, daniel. back at it again with the white man damn daniel damn daniel damn daniel Damn, Daniel. Damn, Daniel. Back at it again with the white vans. Dusty, man. Damn, Daniel. And it blew up massively. People were saying it was just the funniest thing ever. It became like, obviously, into the internet culture. People just writing, damn, Daniel. I bet loads of people would annoy their friends called Daniel at school saying this. Thankfully, I was you know at university when this happened, so... Didn't really catch on um, at university. Now, obviously, if you ask the question, where are the damn Daniel guys now? And yeah, they're, they're nowhere. They're just regular people now because they had their 15 seconds. They went on Ellen. Everyone spoke about them. And, you know, hopefully they made a bit of money. And if you go on their Twitter page with damn Daniel guys, um, it's dead. It's been dead since 2017. You can find the original videos there. 
And if you go on one of the Dan Daniel guys, the guy who said it, Josh, you can find his posts. But uh, thankfully, he turned out pretty all right, to be honest, because he's got the same politics as me in many ways. He's tweeting loads of pro-Palestine stuff. He's retweeting actually like loads of left-wing YouTubers I know, uh, loads of anti-Israeli stuff. So that's good. And it seems Josh now, the guy who said the infamous Dan Daniel, he just is a you know photographer. So he just posts about his photography. Last year, he did tweet about it. He said seven years, damn. Uh, and that got like 258,000 likes. But yeah, it seems by and large, he's just, you know, posting his photography. And I guess that is just like a healthy mindset. And also lucky for these people, because they were in high school, I don't think anyone would even recognize them in the street. They're not the damn Daniel guys. Like no one would even say that to them probably unless they were in their like immediate circle. And I guess... If you can't monetize it and you can't turn it into a social media career if you want that, fading into irrelevance is probably a good thing. And lucky for these guys as well, they didn't get famous for something that was like bad or embarrassing. It was just two people who uploaded a video of them messing around. Just an inside joke between friends. And for some reason or another, it went viral in that moment. And if they sold some merch, because I know they did, then that's fair enough. And maybe it was a different time, but that seems like the more wholesome variant of the 15 seconds of fame. Like I said, inside joke with friends, goes viral, get a bit of attention, go on Ellen, and then both just fade back into obscurity and go on living your normal life. You had this moment of fame, that was interesting. If you said it to someone at a bar, they probably think that was cool. You know, they wouldn't think it, it's stupid. And annoyingly, probably, when you die, there will be an article written about you being the damn Daniel guy. But at the same time, like I said, it's better than being known as the crazy plane lady. Because when she passed away one day, it'll be like, this person who went viral for being crazy on a plane has now passed away. And like, who wants that? Who wants their life defined by one moment? And I guess that's the most important part. Because we have people who genuinely seem horrible, like the racist TikTok trad wife, who probably actually wanted to go viral for saying this and heavily plays into it by being even more racist now, right? Hoping to get some sort of conservative media career. And you know, I have no goodwill towards her and it's clear in my opinion, it's, it's not working for her. So her being remembered for that, I don't feel bad because she never tried to apologize for it or move away from that image. She's played fully into it because it's probably what she wanted. But I do feel bad for, uh, you know, the hundreds and hundreds of people who have gone viral for stuff that's either embarrassing, like Crazy Plain Lady, or maybe something that is a little embarrassing, but you can still play it off as something as part of your personality, like the Hawk Tour girl. And like I said, we'll see how that plays out. And there aren't really many Daniel Brigolis. That's a one-off. And you can understand why that specific person could monetize that image into something that generates, you know, loads of money for her and for fame because she was just so insanely controversial and so sensationalized from her first appearance which actually delved more into everything she was and you'll probably know that because I haven't even said her catchphrase and you know what I'm talking about I haven't said cash me outside I haven't called her the cash me outside girl I've called her Danielle Brigoli and I've called her bad baby and that's how you know she moved away from that and she successfully did that because no one really says that about her anymore. We call her something different. Are we going to be calling Hawk Girl? Are we going to be calling her her first name? I don't even remember it and I read it out, right? So I hope for her sake, one day we do call her her first name and her full name and we talk about her as an actual person. I'm even not doing it in this video to show you like how this trend works because for most people you just become the meme. And that can be a bad thing for a lot of people because you'll never escape it. Damn Daniel, they escaped it. But do most people escape it? You'll always be remembered for that. And that's the danger of it. I think one more note to end the video. Americans have a very different perception of this. And I said this with the racist TikTok trad wife um, person. I said, the way she thinks about this you know, vir virality is so alien to me. She immediately thinks, I'm going to take this and get a job in conservative media just based on the fact that I said the N-word. And the same with the Hawk Tour girl. The way she talks about becoming some sort of celebrity just from this, 
I think just says everything about how Americans are brainwashed. And I guess it's a good thing in some ways. They're brainwashed to think about how they can climb the ladder. While in the UK, you're firmly told like, know your place peasant, you're not getting out of the class you were born into. But at the same time, it's just bizarre to me that they all think like that, well, most Americans, and they all accept it. Like you can just be famous for this one thing, go out and monetize the shit out of it straight away and no one thinks anything of it. It's just the most normal thing ever to do this. Anyway, that is it for the video. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. And if you made it this far, thank you for watching.